Part 2 starts with Elliot, explaining the course of action to take out Steel Mountain, their first target to begin the uprising. He says if they are able to get the heating, ventilation and air conditioning past 95 degrees, then all of the tape backups will become unreadable. However, the rest of the team don't understand what he is saying so he grabs a cassette and demonstrates how the tape will melt and become unusable. He also says that in order to carry out this plan, they have to install a small miniature circuit board behind the thermostat in the Steel Mountain headquarters. Then, one of the outspoken team members, Romero, shows the team the blueprints of the HQ while Elliot explains that the Steel Mountain headquarters must have one security flaw. The security guards, they all have flaws in them. Suddenly, Elliot starts to feel the sudden symptoms of his recent withdrawal from drugs and starts coughing. He walks out of the group's headquarters, goes home and decides to do morphine once again. Afterwards, he takes his dog outside for a walk and sees two men he doesn't like the looks of. Paranoid, he shouts at them before heading back. After returning to his apartment, he hears a sudden pounding on his door and starts to panic. However, it is actually Darlene and asks why she is here. She informs him that Romero has got some new information on the plan and needs Elliot's attention immediately. Hence, the two return to their group HQ where Romero tells him that Elliot's plan will not work. He reveals that after some recon, Evil Corp is advancing their security protocols. Because of this, the tapes which are currently only located in Steep Mountain will be copying and shipping all their data to make hard copy redundancies over the next few days. Elliot inquires where Romero got all this information to which the latter replies that it is all in Evil Corp's network. Elliot then says that this is exactly what Tyrell was talking about previously. He reminds the team that this protocol is only going to take initiative three days from now and that they still have time to make this plan happen. Elliot adds that they have to go today to Steep Mountain. The other team members say they can do it, and Darlene also says she can contact the Dark Army to hit the China Data Center at the same time. Despite all this, Romero still believes that the plan is awful and suggests some alternative options. He also adds that someone has to somehow enter the headquarters to install the circuit board behind the thermostat. Hence, Elliot rises to the occasion and says he will do it. Hearing this, Romero calls Elliot a junkie and says he won't be able to do as he is still drugged up and is untrustworthy. Eventually, everyone decides on following Elliot's plan, so Mr. Robot and Elliot talk over the plan. In the meantime, Romero and another team member, Mobley, go to hijack and steal a minivan for the trip. In the next scene, Elliot, Mr. Robot, Romero and Mobley start their journey to Steep Mountain. During the ride, Elliot struggles with withdrawal symptoms and ends up vomiting inside the van. So, they stop at a hotel and book a room to let Elliot rest for a while. But he struggles to lay down and has severe hallucinations. Meanwhile, at Ollie's place, Angela wakes up before him and manages to steal his CD and office ID card. Following this, she goes to Elliot's apartment, only to find no one is home. She meets Shayla and asks her about Elliot's whereabouts but the latter also has no idea. Meanwhile back at the group headquarters, the main female tech, Trenton, works on the code and finishes updating the software. Moments later, Darlene also enters the headquarters and informs Trenton that she hasn't heard from the boys who left for Steep Mountain. She then mentions that she did not reach the guy from the Dark Army hacking group. Just then, she realizes that it is Sunday. Darlene knows where her guy will be so she and Trenton leave to meet him. In the meantime, Shayla and Angela sit down in a park where Shayla offers her a tab of ecstasy, saying that it will help calm her down. This shocks Angela and says she doesn't do drugs. However, Shayla refuses to take the drug back and says that it will help Angela figure her shit out. So, she pops her tab and Angela does the same. The scene then cuts to Darlene and Trenton in an underground table tennis joint where Darlene tries to find the guy but to no avail. Trenton expresses her concern due to the creepy atmosphere, but Darlene tells her to chill out and says the guy will eventually show up. Meanwhile, Elliot is in bad shape. Mobley and Romero wonder if they should dump him at a hospital or just leave him there but Mr. Robot stands by his side to help him. As the situation gets more tense, Mr. Robot yells at Romero, saying that he should leave if he wants to. As a result, both Romero and Mobley walk out of the place. Surprisingly, Elliot asks for another hit of medicine to get him back on the road. Mr. Robot initially refuses the request, but changes his mind when he realizes that there is no other option left. So, he finds and carries Elliot to a nearby drugstore to get some medicine. Mr. Robot isn't allowed inside the house, so he tells Elliot the minute he's done, he needs to leave without looking or talking to anyone. Elliot agrees and heads inside the house. He goes upstairs and asks for medicine, but they hand him a syringe and tell him it's all they have. Left with no choice, Elliot takes the syringe and a girl helps him to inject it. 
Afterwards, he feels very lightheaded and the girl begins kissing him. All of a sudden, a person starts to fire his gun in the other room which escalates quickly. The next second, the man shoots the girl who is making out with Elliot and then shoots Elliot in the shoulder. As he lays on the floor facing the TV, an F Society advertisement comes on and starts to talk about the government. It seems as if Elliot is hallucinating as he enters the TV and puts on a mask. He then proceeds to see different weird things like receiving a key from the guy in the advertisement, suddenly appearing in a town where he sees a little girl. He also sees his pet fish QWERTY talking to him in his apartment about how he is sick of his life. He then sees himself in a restaurant having dinner with Angela. As he bites into his food, he finds a key to which Angela says yes assuming that Elliot had proposed to her with the key. He then finds himself back in F Society HQ, wearing a tuxedo while Angela wears a wedding dress. The two talk for a bit about Elliot's choices. Suddenly, Elliot wakes up in the hotel room and finally realizes that everything was a dream and he never went to the drug house. However, he finds himself all alone in the room and assumes that everyone has left him there. He starts to panic and cry but fortunately, Mr. Robot reveals himself and reassures Elliot that he will never leave him. Meanwhile, Trenton and Darlene walk outside after failing to find the guy from the Dark Army. Trenton comforts her and says they should just go. Just then, a limo pulls up across the street and Darlene immediately recognizes it and says it's him. The two head over and get into the limo and are greeted by two men wearing masks. One of them yells in Chinese and throws their phones out of the window before driving off. In the meantime, Angela and Shayla are at a club, still very high from the drugs they took in the afternoon. Shayla then proceeds to kiss Angela and the two start making out. Afterwards, Shayla comforts Angela by saying that she herself is the only person that she should worry about. Meanwhile, the Chinese drop off Darlene and she finds the guy that she is looking for. It is actually Cisco and she slaps him for not showing up. It turns out that Darlene and Cisco had dated in the past and she claims that he is still mad about the breakup. Cisco initially hesitates to help Darlene but she manages to seduce and persuade him to talk to the Dark Army. Meanwhile, Romero brews up a homemade remedy for Elliot's stomach and he thanks him for the help. Then, Romero heads out to pull the van around while Elliot is happy to be getting back to normal. On the other hand, Angela goes to the all-safe office, and by using Ollie's badge, she sneaks inside and pops in Cisco's CD at his desk. Shortly after, she notices someone get off the elevator so she sneaks back out of the office. In the meantime, Fernando, the violent assaulter and drug dealer who dealt with Shayla, is in prison after Elliot anonymously tipped him off to the police. Fernando is told by his lawyer that he won't be getting out of jail, as they have a solid case and have all digital records to prove it. Elsewhere, Elliot, Romero and Mobley lurk in a coffee shop while Mr. Robot nabs a Steel Mountain Axis ID badge from a guy at the shop. Afterwards, the four enter the Steel Mountain compound and go over their plan of attack inside their car. A worker named Bill Harper is their first target. Afterwards, they will need Bill's supervisor Wendy to get Elliot to where he can plug in the miniature circuit board. Before Elliot heads inside the building, Mr. Robot hands him an earpiece for communication. Elliot makes his way inside Steel Mountain and sits in the lobby waiting to be approached by Bill. It turns out that they have set up a meeting for Elliot under the name Sam Sepiol. However, when Elliot asks for a tour he is turned down as Bill states that they require appointments for tours. Then, to scare Bill into giving him a tour, Elliot says to look him up and says his name again. <laughs> Fed up, Bill leaves Elliot but it turns out that Mobley has a reputation for Wikipedia editing and edits Elliot's page into an impressive profile making him look like someone very important. Bill searches him up and after seeing his wiki page, proceeds to give him a tour of the facility. During the tour, Mr. Robot reminds Elliot that he needs to make Bill call his supervisor Wendy for the next stage in their plan. So, Elliot starts to belittle Bill by saying he is lonely and that no one cares about him and that he should call someone of more importance than him. This gets to Bill's head and he starts to sniffle as he calls his supervisor. It turns out that Elliot had already researched Bill's social media profile which made it obvious that he was a loner. To the guy's surprise, a supervisor named Trudy appears instead of Wendy. This puts all of them on high alert as they had only planned a specific plan for Wendy. Elliot asks if he could get a tour of level 2 to which he is refused as it is out of bounds to civilians. So, Trudy escorts Elliot to the lift in order to see him out. However, Mobley clutches in and spoofs a message from her husband saying that he is in the hospital. As a result, she leaves Elliot and heads into her office in a state of panic. Afterwards, Elliot is instructed to go to a staircase that leads up as the lift needs a fingerprint. 
However, he goes to the complete opposite side of the building, and when he heads back, he unexpectedly stumbles across his friend Tyrell who is the CTO of Steel Mountain. Elliot panics and says that he is just there for routine data check from the company he works at, all safe. Tyrell then asks Elliot for lunch and the latter has to agree to it. Later, during their lunch, Elliot starts to feel wheezy so he leaves for the bathroom and vomits in the basin sink repeatedly. These are the first symptoms of his morphine withdrawal. As he is cleaning up, Elliot notices a storage room behind him containing a thermostat. He takes this golden opportunity to install the circuit board inside the thermostat. But as he is doing so, he gets disturbed by Tyrell who walks in the bathroom. Tyrell reveals that he knows Elliot had framed Terry Colby. Elliot is shocked to hear this and tries to defend himself, but all attempts to do so are shut down. Tyrell doesn't intend to turn Elliot in and only wants to know his weakness, revenge. After Tyrell leaves, Elliot finishes installing the circuit board and leaves the HQ. Meanwhile, Darlene is talking to the Dark Army about sinking their attack to destroy the data from the Chinese database when she is suddenly banned from the chat room. This infuriates Darlene and says she's going to fix things, Trenton saying to let it go. In the meantime, it's revealed that Angela has broken up with Ollie and has moved in temporarily with her dad. In the evening, Angela goes through her dad's things and finds stacks and stacks of past due notices from Evil Corp which shocks her. She takes the bills in her hand to ask her dad about it but doesn't want to put the burden on him. Hence, she instead goes out for a run. The scene then cuts to Tyrell and his wife Joanna in a limo discussing the potential new chief technology officer, Scott and his wife Sharon whom they are about to have dinner with. It seems as though they are suspicious of them and also don't trust them too. Meanwhile, Darlene confronts Sisko in the library and demands to know why the Dark Army bailed on F Society at the last moment. Sisko tells her that the Dark Army had already planned on bailing out before the boys had even gone to Steel Mountain. Hearing this Darlene screams and storms out of the library. Tyrell and his wife finally arrive for dinner with the new intended CTO Scott and his wife. Scott is confused as to how Tyrell knows about his probable promotion. There is clearly some tension in the air as Tyrell says that if he were Scott, he wouldn't have let him in the house. Scott and Joanna talk about wine whereas Tyrell follows Sharon into the restroom and stands in front of her as she urinates. Before leaving, Tyrell thanks Sharon for a lovely evening. Back in F Society's HQ, the boys return with high heads and happy faces until Darlene says that there is a problem. She says that they have lost communication with the Dark Army and have ultimately lost China. This makes Darlene desperate and she threatens to launch the attack on Steel Mountain instead. Mr. Robot tries to calm her down saying that there is no point in doing so as they will recover their data from the China facility. Fortunately, Elliot manages to convince Darlene to stop and assures everyone that they will find another way. Later, Elliot invites Darlene to crash over at his place, and when the two of them get home to Elliot's, he finds a phone on the floor, ringing. He answers it and finds out that it is actually Fernando, and reminds Elliot that even though he is in prison, he can still get to him. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to watch the next part to see more about the robot.